to the next point, we should ensure that whatever we do is clear. That means work is being done, we can see that it is in opposite direction. Good day, learners and viewers at home. You are welcome to another agricultural science uh, lesson today. And I still remain Thomas Peter. And the topic we are discussing today is types and classification of farm animals. Under this topic, we are going to see three items. One. Definition of farm animals. Two, types of farm animals. And three, classification of farm animals. We are going to see the definition now. Farm animals are a group of animals that are reared in the farm for food or for commercial purposes. So this means farmer keep animals for their consumption, for their uses either on the farm or they sell it out to get income. Types of farm animals. The various types of farm animals include the following. One, we have poultry, which includes all the types of birds that are domesticated at home. Two, we have pigs or swine. Three, we have cattle. And four, we have sheep. We also have rabbits, snail, fish, bees, and goats. Classification of farm animals. Farm animals are classified into three major groups based on the following. One based on habitants, two, based on the uses of those animals, and three, nature of their digestive tract. Then, let us see the classification based on habitants. This classification defines the environment in which the animal lives naturally. There are two types of habitants. For animals. One, terrestrial habitants and aquatic habitants. Then we are going to see the terrestrial habitants. Terrestrial habitants, this refers to animals living on the surface of the land. This means that the animal's growth, development, feeding, and all other activities are done on land. Examples of such animals that are related to these habitants are cattle, sheep, goats, rabbits, pig, to mention but a few. This also includes birds living on trees, which is known as arborea habitants. Examples of such animals that are related to these habitants are pigeons and Koala, koala bells, to mention but a few. Aquatic habitants. This refers to a situation where animals live in a body of water, like rivers, lakes, streams, lagoons, wells, ponds, and seas. Example of farm animals that live Inside water are fishes, crabs, and shrimps. Classification of farm animals based on their uses. All farm animals are reared by farmers 
for one or more uses, either for food or for other purposes. The following could be the purposes why farm animals are kept by the farmers. One, farmers may be keeping animals for food. We eat the food. We eat the meat obtained from animals. And this gives us protein and other nutrients. Two, hide and skin. The hides are those skin obtained from large animals like elephants, cows, donkeys, and horses. While well, the skin are those obtained from small ruminant animals like sheep and goat. Animals are also kept for their horns. Horns are very important. They are used as handles in the manufacturing of umbrellas and knives. Animals are also kept for their milk. We use milk in the productions of baby food, and we take the raw food, milk. We also use milk in the productions of yogurt. Then, animals are also kept for income especially peasant farmers. They used to sell the animals, get income, and solve their financial problems. Eggs. When you keep birds, you get eggs. Eggs are used in bakery. They are also used in our pharmaceutical industries in the productions of drugs. Animal dogs or manure is another reason why farmers keep animals. Because the excreta or feces of animals are used as manure in the productions of our crops. Animals are also kept for the purpose of production of bones. Bones are used in the production of bone meal because when animals are slaughtered, the bones are extracted, dried, and crushed into powder, used in feeding the livestock. The bones meal provides calcium. That's the development of the bones of the young animal growing. Bones are also used as handles for knives and umbrella, just like horns. Animals are also kept for their blood. We have blood meal. After an animal is slaughtered, you extract the blood, dry it, and it will be coagulated. Then crush it into powder and you use it as blood meal in feeding livestock. Feathers and hairs. There are some specific sheep that are kept purposely for their hairs. They are used in the manufacturing of cot, and feathers are used in the manufacturing of cushions, pillows. Now, classification of farm animals based on the nature of their digestive tract or alimentary canal. But before we go into this classification proper, there is a need we define what is meant by digestive tract or alimentary canal. Digestive tract or alimentary canal is that system in the animal's body we are breaking of food or digestion takes place for easy absorption of the food nutrients into the body. Two classes of animals are involved here. One, we have non-ruminant, otherwise known as 
monogastric animals. Then the second class, which is ruminants or polygastric animals. Then we shall discuss them one after the other. Monogastric or non-ruminants. These are animals that have only one stomach and they don't ruminate or chew the cord. These animals cannot digest cellulose or fiber properly. But with the help of enzymes along the digestive tract, examples of such animals are poultry, birds, rabbits, and pig. Digestive tract of a fowl. This is a, a diagram of digestive tract of a Roman, and a non-ruminant animal. You can see in birds. Birds have no teeth, but rather have a beak. They just pick the greens, whole greens, and swallow. You can see the oesophagus the, near the throat. From the oesophagus, the feet drop in a projection at the neck region, known as cropped. The feet remains there for a day or two for it to be moist and ferment. Then the feet moves to the proventriculus. At the proventriculus, hydrochloric acid is produced. Then the feet moves to the gizzard. The gizzard grounds the foot into smaller pieces before it moves to the duodenum. That's the first part of the small intestine. And at that region, there is a structure known as pancreas. It produces pancreatic juice and releases it to the feet before it moves to the small intestine. At the small intestine, enzymatic digestion continues. At the small intestine also, absorption takes place. And absorption takes place in the small intestine with the help of a finger-like structure known as villi. The undigested feet becomes west. They move to the small intestine, up to the large intestine, I mean, before it moves out of the digestive tract through the anus or the vent. So let us see it here. As I explained earlier briefly, feed especially whole greens when taken by the fowl is swallowed without chewing, since it has no teeth but beak. The feed goes through the esophagus to the crop found at the neck region and is stored temporary for a while for it to be moist and fermented by bacteria. The, feed, the food then moves to the proventriculus where hydrochloric acid is produced to act on the foot. The foot moves from proventriculus to the gizzard, where grinding takes place before it moves to the small intestine, where further enzymatic digestion takes place. Absorption of food nutrients also takes place in the small intestine. As I said earlier, with the help of a finger-like structures, known as villi. The undigested food materials are removed from the tract as feces through the cloaca or the vents.
Now, the polygastric or ruminant animals. As it is seen here in the diagram, you can see the esophagus. Example, cattle will just grab the grasses and swallow directly with little or minimal chewing. The feed will go through the esophagus to a projected stomach known as a uh, rumen. At the rumen, the feet is just taught there throughout the day. But there are some important activities that takes place in the rumen with the help of bacteria and protozoa. What are these activities? The bacteria and protozoa will change the feet into fatty acids. And these examples of fatty acids are butyric acid, acetic acid, and propionic acid. Then this acid will be absorbed by the rumen. These microorganisms also synthesize protein known as microbial protein. And this microbial protein will also be absorbed by the wall of the rumen for the animal uses. Then the feet, undigested feet, will move to the reticulum. From the reticulum, there will be antiparasitic movement of the tract, which will force the feet back to the mouth of the animal. And the animal will chew it the second time. The process of taking the food back to the mouth is called regurgitation. Then the animal will chew the feet and re-swallow the second time. But when the feet come the second time, it will land in the omasome. At the omasome, absorption of water will take place. Then from the omasome, the feet will move to the abomasome. At the abomasome, enzymes will be produced to act on the food before the undigested food moves to the large intestine. From there, it passes out to the uh, uh, outside through the anus. Now, let us see the real explanation as it is written here. When a ruminant or polygastric animal like the cow wants to feed, it cuts the grasses and swallows with little or minimal chewing. It is swallowed through the esophagus to the rumen, where the grasses are accumulated for some time. Bacteria and protozoa act upon the food and produce voluntary fatty acids like butyric, propionic, and acetic acid, which are absorbed by the rumen. The microorganism also produce protein, known as microbial protein, which is also absorbed by the rumen for the animal's uses. But when the animal finishes filling the rumen, it finds a quiet place and lay down. Then antiparasitic movement of the small of the stomach will start and force the accumulated grasses in the rumen to move to the reticulum, from where it re-enters the esophagus again and back to the mouth, a process known as regurgitation or chewing the cord. When the undigested grasses in the mouth are now properly chewed into semi-liquid, it is re-swallowed the second time, which moves to the omasome, where water absorption takes place, before it moves to the abomasome, otherwise known as true stomach. In the abomasome, enzymes are produced to act on the food as it moves to the small intestine, where absorption takes place, with the undigested food materials are kept in the large intestine until they are expelled as dons or feces through the anus. Differences between monogastric and polygastric digestion. It is very important to note here that there are remarkable differences. And one of the differences is have monogastric animals have only one stomach. But polygastric, that is ruminant animals, have 
four stomach compartments. Two, monogastric or non-ruminant cannot ruminate or chew the cord. But polygastric or ruminant animal can chew the cord or ruminate. Three, digestion is mostly by enzymes with monogastric or non-ruminant. Well, digestion is done mostly by bacteria and protozoa in polygastric ruminants. Four, monogastric animals cannot synthesize microbial protein. Well, polygastric or ruminants can synthesize microbial protein. And lastly, example of these monogastric animals are about pig. Pig and rabbit. Well, example of polygastric animals are cattle, sheep, and goat. My dear students, today we have learned an important topic. We are animals are classified into different classes. We gave the definition of farm animals, and we stress the classification up to the inhabitants their uses, and their digestive system. And we discuss how the digestive system of a ruminant animal differs with the uh, non-ruminant animals. In this case, it is very clear now that you should know the feeds you are giving the animals. That is why when you see a cow feeding throughout the day, throughout the night, the animal will be chewing until daybreak. And when the day is broken, you will see the stomach of the ruminant animal flat by indication the rumen is empty. It needs to be refueled and start eating and the process continue. My dear students, I hope we have learned a very, very important uh, lesson today in agricultural science. But before I go, I want to leave you with an assignment. One. Discuss the classification of farm animals based on their habitants. I take it again. Discuss the classification of farm animals based on their habitants. Two, define polygastric and monogastric animals with five examples each. Define polygastric and monogastric animals with five examples each. Question number three, outline five differences between ruminant and non-ruminant animals. Outline five differences between ruminant and non-ruminant animals. That marks the end of the lesson. For more information, I refer you to these references. Essential Agricultural Science for Senior Secondary Schools by Nguena. Essential Agricultural Science for Senior Secondary Schools by Nguena. Two, Prescribed Agricultural Science for Senior Secondary Schools by S.A. Omoroi. Prescribed Agricultural Science for Senior Secondary Schools by S.A. Omoroi. Thank you, my dear student, for your patience to listen very well. To submit your assignment, I still remain Thomas Peter with this contact number 080 51 21 6365. Thomas Peter 080 51 21 6365. Or my colleague Rashida Umar 080 34 51 3576. Rashida Umar, 080-34-51-3576. Stay safe, keep learning, COVID-19 is real. Thank you.